Man, gather round. OG7 back here. And like every other day, guys, you're going to have some very interesting and powerful and mind-expanding, mind-blowing stories of victory and glory. The victory of understanding, dude. If you don't understand every aspect of your life, like the ancient Grecians, man, who believe in a sound mind, sound body, sound spirit, sound financial practices, then your life is going to be in disarray and the glory of really understanding. Once you have that fine tune, there's nothing in this world that you can't accomplish if you're willing to put in the work, guys. So guys, before I get into the topic of today's video, as always, I got to talk to you about my, the sponsor of today's video, the sponsor of my channel, which is BallinLegit.com. Go over there, guys, if you want to get your outer game together, because let me explain something to you guys in this life. The fastest way to change your life in a positive trajectory or a positive direction is to get your outer game together because I'm going to tell you a funny story, man. I remember when I first got out to University of Life, I was wearing uh, I was wearing clothes from the homeless shelter that didn't really fit. And it's just how it is. I didn't have any clothes. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any resources. So uh, I was living in a homeless shelter and they gave me clothes and they didn't fit well. And even though I was tall and muscular, and I was actually, uh, back then I was working construction and day labor, and I was getting a, you know, a good bit of money, nothing to brag about, but you know, I was able to stack my chips, so to speak. And uh, I had, you know, positive interactions with people, even though I was very angry at the time. And I'm sharing with you this story because then uh, when I got into college and I got into corporate America, <laughs> I was still wearing the homeless guy clothes, right? So then uh, my, my best friend, man, uh, Curtis Thomas, the, the owner of BallinLegit.com, he was like, hey, my man, you got you to gotta clean up your act, bro, because like the people seeing you here in the office, you're wearing homeless dude clothes and stuff, and you got money now. But I had a, I had a, what's it called? Not a abundance. I had a scarcity mindset. I was like, I was making money, but I was just wanted to hold on to it just in case I didn't want to be homeless no more. It's 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 a it's a weird experience once you've been at the rock bottom of your life. You never want to get there again, so you have a you have a fear of failure, bro. So anyway, man, the, the Curtis tells me, "Hey, man, you gotta you know change your change the way you dress." So he started giving me some tips on how to dress and stuff, man. And I'm telling you. I mean, we went shopping and he taught me like how to dress, man, like how to get pants that fit, the shoes that match your belt, a nice fitting shirt, whether it's a polo or collar shirt, or even a nice t-shirt that just fits your body. You know, how he turned me on to wearing nice watches, dude. And I'm just telling you, man, at night, overnight, immediately overnight, people start treating me differently. So I wanted you guys to have that same experience. Those of you guys who aren't where you want to be in life socially or romantically or financially, this is your OG telling you, man. You know, I'm telling you this from experience, man. You get your outer game together, it'll change your life. So go over to BallinLegit.com, look through all of the awesome stuff he has there, and then when you order something on checkout, use the code OG to get 15% off, also to support the channel. Secondly, go over to Dr. Katrina Dahl's uh, Patreon, all things internal, because even though you get your external together, then you got to work on your internal. I think that's the order. I think external first, then internal. But without further ado, man, I want to tell you guys uh, why I haven't posted. It's been about a week or so. And, uh, you know, without letting the cat out of the bag or spilling the beans, man, I got a lot of very, very positive things going on. And one thing I learned in this life, guys, this is what I want to share with you guys in this video. Learn to be a doer and not a talker. So what's the difference? There's a lot of guys, there's three types of people. There's talkers and there's doers and there's showers. So what's the difference? A talker, there's a lot of people can talk a good game. Oh, I'm going to do this, and I'm planning to do that, and, and wait till you see me do this, and this is what I got in the pipeline. Okay, that's talking, and um, you know maybe it's their personality. I don't agree with that. I'm going to tell you why later on. Then there's doers. Those are the guys that just quietly knock stuff out, and then you say, hey, man, when'd you do that, or how'd you do that, and when'd this happen? 
And then maybe if you ask them after they've done it, they'll tell you. But they just put their head down and do it. And then there's the showers. And these are people like Muhammad Ali. And then uh, what's the one dude? Uh, they're saying he's the greatest boxer of all time. Uh, the, the lightweight dude, the African-American dude. What's his name? The really rich dude. Thing. Sorry, guys. I'm getting senile, man. I, I can't remember stuff, man. And uh, Anyway, he's a very famous boxer, man. He boxed Conor McGregor. And uh, I forget his name, but help me out, guys. Anyway, uh, they say he's the most technical boxer in history, right? So anyway, him and Muhammad Ali, man, and, and people like Bruce Lee. When I was a kid, they had this dude named uh, Billy Jack. And what they do is they tell you what they're going to do, and then they show you what they're going to do, and they do it. Um, I think that's a bit of showmanship. It's flashy stuff, and maybe that's not my personality. I'm not trying to tell you guys how to be. I'm telling you what to do in order to find the best version of yourself as you project, as you tr proceed down the path in your life to find the best life for you. That's all I'm trying to do is to give you some tools to use along the way. So if you need a hammer, I'm going to give you a hammer. Metaphorically, if you need a screwdriver, if you need a saw, you know, if you need a drill, I'm going to give you all these things. So then it's up to you as you proceed down this, your path of life to figure out when you need to use the appropriate tool. But if all you have is a hammer, guys, in this life, you'll view everything as a nail and everything's not a nail. So without further ado, let's get into the topic of today's video. And this is a banger, guys. This is a new series I came up with, guys. And this is the name of the series. And it's a multiple, multiple video series. Because, dude, I'll be having some uh, epiphanies, man. And for those of you who don't know what an epiphany is, look it up. But basically, epiphany is just like when you light bulb goes off in your head about your life. Like, wow, you know. And you look back on your life and you realize some things that you've done. Maybe some things you could have done better, you could have done worse, maybe not done at all, you know, or maybe sought some counsel and some help. But here's a new series I'm going to have for you guys. It's called The Three Easiest Ways to the Get a Girlfriend for Guys Who Don't Have One series. And this is the introduction video because, guys, I'm going I'm to share something with you. And I was telling my girlfriend, Yoni, man, and I hope she's watching, man, because um, she's very... Man, she's very interesting, and I don't know if it's, uh, you know, I don't know if it's Filipino culture. See, I want to explain something to you guys, and this is coming from the heart. You got to understand this. Women are women are women are women. Women is the same all over the world. The only difference I've noticed dating women from different cultures is sometimes, no, this is not sometimes, it's all the time. The culture can have such a hold on them, bro. That it's almost like they're brainwashed, dude. And I'm not picking on Philippine culture. I'm talking about culture in general. Let's talk about my culture. Let's talk about Puerto Rican culture. Let's talk about African American culture. Let's talk about African culture. Let's talk about Russian culture. Let's talk about uh, Ukrainian culture. Let's talk about Mexican culture. Uh, what other women have I dated? Let's talk about Hawaiian culture. Um, I've dated a lot of different women, bro. And all I'm saying is this, women are always emotional, it's just how it is because the way that the good Lord put them together with their hormonal, so this is the problem, they have a cycle guys. So let's just say, here's a woman and she's normal, her hormones are like that. I think that's only one week out of the month actually. So then what happens is, uh, the woman starts, um, you know, preparing to ovulate, so her body, her hormones like start getting stuff ready for the eggs and stuff. So let's say that's another week. Then she starts to ovulate, dude. That's when she's the most horniest, the most emotional, the most just frisky, let's say. But then, you know, after if she doesn't get impregnated, then afterwards she's got all these hormones that have to be flushed out. That's when she goes on her period. And that's when she's in the most pain and she's such an asshole and all this stuff. So it's cyclically, dude. It's just how it is. Now you put on top of that like cultural expectations and then the brainwashing from the culture. So just so the people that watch my channel from the Philippines, I'm not talking about your culture right now. Let's talk about my culture, American culture. The young girls in American culture, I had to steer my daughters away from this culture. It's a toxic culture of hookup, 
have sex with as many men as possible, be a slut and a dirty, a dirty hoe, right? That's the culture of America, Do You look at it in the music videos, you look at it in the movies, you listen to it in the music, bro, you look at it in the way that they dress. It's just the culture. And who dictates culture? The government, dude. So what women have to ask themselves, and women kill me with this feminism, and this is not a rant to get into today's video. Women have to understand, does the government run your life through commercials and media and social media, dude, and all these women, you got to feel like you need makeup and you got to put on layers of makeup and all this fake hair and fake eyelashes and, and all this perfume and stuff and push-up bras and surgery and high heels and the latest fashion to feel beautiful? You mean, really? You're, you're a strong, independent woman, but you let the government and society dictate your self-worth as a human being. To me, that's a sign of weakness, and you are a follower. And that's what I say about any culture, any woman that lets their culture dictate how they live their life or how they find happiness or how they pick a mate. You are a follower, and you are a victim. Me, my culture doesn't dictate what I do. What dictates what I do is my life experiences and me associating with powerful, strong, rich, successful people. And they mentor me and tell me what they did so I can get, it's called mirroring and modeling. The rich and powerful and successful people I've met, I've asked them, hey man, how can I get like you? And they tell me what to do and I do exactly what they tell me to do until I achieve the level of success they have. Now, I have mucked it up a few times because I have gotten rich and messed with the wrong women or gotten rich and just spending money like I'm crazy, not understanding credit and not understanding uh, business taxes and things of that nature. But now here at 62 that I've been to the mountaintop and the deepest pits of hell and back several times, I, my friend, understand the formula. I'm as serious with you. So that's what I wanted to say, man, because... uh Sometimes culture can mess up a relationship, dude. It can mess up a relationship because the culture is so strong. And here's what here's what's getting to the top of today's video, men. Men, not boys, men. You have to have enough cojones and be strong enough to understand no matter how beautiful, pretty, sexy your girlfriend is, no matter how wet her pussy is, dude, no matter how many tricks you can do in the bedroom, bro. If she isn't strong enough to be a leader in her own life and not let her culture dictate what the fuck she thinks, bro, then you got to have a serious conversation with her, dude, because you cannot allow her culture or anyone's culture to dictate your behavior because then you'll be a follower and you'll be a victim and you'll be a sheep, my friend. And you will never live your best life. So without further ado, I want to get into the the introduction of this series, the three easiest ways to, to get a girlfriend for guys who don't have one. The first thing I want to tell you, I do a lot of research on YouTube, so I'm very familiar with Fresh and Fit and Satan the Sinner and mediocre tutorials for reviews and uh, AQ and uh, who's the other one? O'Shea Duke Jackson and uh, and Philip Scott and the myriad of dudes who's giving you guys information on how to be good with women, man. And here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a lot of it is malarkey. Why is it malarkey? Am I saying the information is not good? No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, and I've said this in previous videos. If you're a five foot five, 300 pound dude and you want to become an NBA player, it doesn't make sense to talk to Zion Williams or Shaquille O'Neal or LeBron James who are seven feet tall human specimens. They can't, they cannot give you the information that is applicable to you. Yeah, can they tell you what they did to get there? Yeah, but here's the problem. You don't have their same genetic gifts, your genetic blessings or hit the genetic lottery. Like So any information they give you, I'm not saying it's not usable, but it's not. 100% applicable to your life. That's the whole thing you guys got to understand. There's a lot of people on YouTube telling you how to get good with women and how to slay a lot of women and how to sleep with a lot of women, how to be a boss and a high-value man, high-status man. But look who's telling you this. Like you, 
Most men will never be Andrew Tate in their life. Most men will never be fresh and fit in their life. Most men will never be mediocre tutorials for reviews. I'm not saying they're giving you bad information. What I'm saying is, it's the information applicable to you. And this is why this video series is so important. Here's why, guys. I want to explain something to you. And this is from my experience 62 years on this planet, man, living in the, some of the most worst hoods in the world, living in some of the richest places in the world, dealing with some of the most savage people in the world, some of the most athletic people, some of the most talented, smart people, some of the most rich people in the world. Men. I'm not even talking about women. Let's talk about men. I don't really know women. I know men. So that's what I want to tell you guys that nobody's telling you. There's five specific Types of men, and I'm not talking about archetypes. Our archetype is, um, let's just say, your mold, your mold that you that you fit into into society. I'm talking about the types of men, the mentalities of men. There's five different types of men. The first type of man we're going to talk about in the series is men who can't get women. No, guys, let's just be honest. Let's talk about American culture, and it's a little different here in the Philippines because they have a different social or economic outlook on life, how they view money and how they view happiness. But let's talk about America and westernized cultures. Dude, there is a large population of men that are invisible to women, meaning that if you're not over six foot and your banana's not over six inches and you don't have an over 600 credit score, you don't have a six pack abs, bro. And you're not looking like a model, like you're above a six on the sexual market value scale. You're invisible to women. Dude, look, if you, if you want to learn something today and, and quit worrying about me not having fancy music and editing on here, just when you go, you guys, you guys I'm talking to now, if you're part of this group or if you don't know you're in this group, you're going to find out. Just walk down the street and I'm going to tell you, this is a very simple thing. A lot of you guys quit being on your phone, but just put your phone in your pocket, walk down the street. And everybody you see, just look them in the eye. I'm not talking about staring them, but just look them in the eye. And what you're going to notice, the very beautiful, desirable, even the girl next door, the sexy women, they don't even look at you, bro. That's how you know you're invisible. That's how you know you fall into this group of men who can't get women no matter what. These are the incels, which stands for involuntarily celibate. And the TFLs, which is the true force lonelies, these guys want a girlfriend and they can't get one. So they listen to Fresh and Fit and they listen to Andrew Tate and they listen to Mediocre Torium for reviews and all these dudes giving you advice. Man, you're I'm not trying to be offensive. You're subpar. You're not even you're not even a normal guy. You're just a guy who can't even get a girlfriend no matter what. You can't even pay women. Hey, some of these guys are so ugly, and what I mean in a, in the sense of I think everybody's beautiful in their own way, but they're ugly according to society's um, stigma of what a handsome man is. You know, maybe they don't fit the asymmetrical face or, you know what I mean, they, they don't have the right skin tone. I don't know. Maybe their teeth are not right or whatever, their, their cranial structure. But they're, they're categorized as ugly or fat or too short or like Quasimodo. That's the first type of guy. Here's the second type of guy. Men who pay for women, dude. I think this is the... Okay, so they got a phrase saying that the man who doesn't read is just as, is worse than the man who can't read. So men who pay for pay women to have sex or pay women, man, who pay women to have sex. Um, dude, that's just... That's just I'm going to have a video for that. So let me just break down a different type of men. So then number three... Is men for who settle for the women they can get, and I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I used to be one of those guys when I was a when I was a teenager, dude, and when I was a little boy in grade school. In my mind, I thought I was getting a lot of women, but it basically was the women that were choosing me. And when I think about it now, it wasn't really the women that I wanted, right? And how did I know this? Because once I became like an athlete, dude, and I became a a competitive bodybuilder and a competitive martial arts and the accolades and the and the social status and the fame. Then I noticed a different pool of women that I found attractive and sexy. So looking back on my younger years, even though I had women in my life, 
it was the ones that I settled for. And these are the same kind of guys. And this is why a lot of guys cheat on their wives and girlfriends because in the sexual market value, let's say you're a five, okay? And let's say you got a little bit of money or you got a little bit of education. So, you know, maybe you can get a six, but you're not getting the sevens, eights, and nines, and tens. I'm talking about the hotties, the baddies, the Instagram models. You're not. So you just settle for what you can get, and then maybe sometime in life you might travel to a foreign country or go to a different part of the United States. And the women, it, the United States is kind of funny. I remember when I moved from New York uh, to Philly, and I had this New York-like vibe. The women from Philly thought I was sexy because I wasn't from there. I remember when I moved from Philly to California. The women in California thought I was sexy. Why? Because I'm not from there. I got a different vibe. I'm not saying I'm not sexy. I'm just giving you a comparative uh, understanding, right? So when you go somewhere different, the women there may view you as like, you know, a delicacy or a specialty or, you know, something that's unique, right? So that's why it's good to travel. But you'll get to see that, you know, when you go to different places, maybe the, the quality of women you can get is higher, because this is you get into the women you have to settle for, the women that are choosing you. Let's put it that way. Number four is men who are good with women, man. And uh, this comes down to my mentor, man, my best friend, Curtis Thomas, like this dude. And I've been, let me tell you something, guys. I grew up around pimps and players and hustlers all back east. Like dudes that got game, either they got, either got really big baloney ponies or big strong savages. Or they just suave. But I mean, I've been around men that are good with women all my life, dude. My, my father, my uncles were good with women, bro. So, but I've never seen anybody have this skill set of Curtis Thomas. That's why I tell you guys to go over to BobbinLegit.com because he can help you, man, overall. Not just with your outer game, but understanding women in life and business and making money and being successful. This guy is just really good with women, meaning that. He pretty much, man, is a woman, a women's magnet, dude. Like women are just flocked to this dude. And I've, I've studied him, man, because I study people. I tell my girlfriend Yoni all the time, I study people. Like I study people and I just analyze them, you know, from the way they walk, they talk, how they think, how they view the world. I try to understand people because I read this book by Stephen Covey. It's called The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. If you don't read any other books... You know, if you don't read any other books, because I've, I've asked my girlfriend to read this book called As a Man Thinketh. That was one of the books that changed my life along with another book called The, the Strangest Secret. But one of, the, one of the books that impacted me the most in, as far as life and relationships and making money was The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And it teaches you to analyze people so you can understand how to relate to them so that they can feel that you are on their team and you're for them. Because when you meet people, people come up with this quick assessment of you. That's why it's called a first impression. When people first meet you, they say, is this guy like me or is he not like me? Not does he like me, but is he like me or is he not like me? And this is how rich people very quickly weed out poor people from associating it. It's the way you walk, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you carry yourself, your body language, right? Then the second one is this, guys. Is this guy for me or is he against me? And this is where the seven habits of highly effective people really changed my life. So I just want to give a shout out to Curtis Thomas again. But this is men who are good with women, dude. And this was Curtis. When we got out of university life. He didn't have no money. I think he was working in Costco as a forklift driver. Dude was always been a slayer of women, dude. Like I've never seen anybody have this skill set ever. I've asked the dude to write a book, but he's too rich. He don't care. And the, the number five, you guys, is men who can get any women they want. So let me go ahead and clarify this, because a lot of you guys take the English language. You get very specific, like, oh, gee, there's no man can get any woman he wants. When I say any woman he wants, I'm saying any woman that this man chooses to have, he can have. Here's why. And this is, these are guys like Andrew Tate and the guy who's, who's from the Sauce cast, Value Tainment. His name is Sauce. And guys of that nature, those type of high, like Dan Blazilian, them type of dudes, man. These is billionaire dudes, right? They can have any woman they want. Why? Leonardo DiCaprio, these type of dudes, man. George Clooney, these type of cats. Why? 
because dude, they have the money, the power, the social status, the looks, and the body, and the attitude. Like they got everything that women want, bro. The 666, six, six. they're over six foot, over six figures. Got an over six inch baloney pony banana, bro. Got an over 600 credit score. They got money, they got fame, power, status. So women that, that are that, that, that that's important to you, and I want you to understand something, guys. When women, there's different types of women. There's like, you know, let's just say unattractive women, you know, and let's just say ugly women, and then let's just say regular women, and let's say cute and pretty and beautiful and sexy, and then just like, oh my God. The women that go from like like pretty to beautiful to sexy and oh my God, their head is like this. It's like a swole helium balloon. They only want the top status guys. And let me tell you something, guys. When I was a top status guy, I've had those type of women. And let me tell you something, guys. The, the juice is not worth the squeeze. They're a headache. They're high maintenance. They're full of shit. They're entitled, bro. I don't have time to be arguing with a woman every day. When I tell a woman, hey, don't be wearing a sexy dress. And don't be putting on makeup, caking on makeup, and keep your hair some way and she don't listen. It's okay. You know why? She's not the woman for me, bro. So these women, are these, these super beautiful women, they're, dude, it's high maintenance. It's too much problems, bro. Not when, If you're a businessman, this is what I told my girlfriend. You're a successful businessman. You're a savage. You don't have time to deal with a lot of different women in your rotation. You don't have time to deal with a very beautiful, high status, I mean, high maintenance woman. Yeah, you deserve a beautiful woman, but if she's high maintenance, bro, she's gonna she's gonna crumble your kingdom so these type of guys man when I'm, the reason I say they can get any woman they want because the women that are super beautiful and super sexy they only want the cream of the crop guys they only want the top one percent guys and they'll do whatever it takes to get them so that's why you see guys like uh, Jeff Bezos when he went to this party with Leonardo DiCaprio Leonardo could have took his wife if you watch the video just google it Leonardo DiCaprio and Jeff Bezos' wife at the party. She was ready to lay down. Look at what's happening to Adam 22, man. His wife got his wife got split open by a big BBC dude, man. That dude can take Adam's wife whenever he wants. Look at the myriad of cucks in our country. Because if a woman views like if a guy's a high status male for real, like he's a millionaire, billionaire, and he's tall and handsome, he's got money and muscles and fame and power. Dude, why do you think professional athletes just slay women wherever they go, bro? Will Chamberlain said he had sex with over 100,000 women, bro. Magic Johnson, man. So anyway, guys, if you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel because I'm going to go way deep. This is just to give you a surface level view because I really want to help you guys understand. A lot of you guys want a girlfriend and you can't get one and you buying these blow up dolls and sex dolls and and you, I'm talking about you guys that can't even pay for for Panani. Just because you're weird or you look weird or you act weird or you're socially inept or whatever. This video series is for you and then I'm going to work my way up the ladder. Even to the, to the top guys who can get any woman they want. Because I'm going to share with them my view of stoicism and minimalism. And how to not just give your seat out to any woman just because she's beautiful and sexy and... And uh, she's like, oh, my God, just just blow your mind away how beautiful and sexy she is. You don't give your seat just to any woman. She's got to have the total package, dude. Looks, spirit, intelligence, and a great personality. And more important, a willingness to cooperate. So until next time, OG Silverback, out.